ladies and gentlemen on behalf of shalesh chemata school of management iit bombay i take great pleasure to extend a hearty welcome to sri swaminathan gurumurthy a well known commentator on economics and politics and a leading corporate advisor in india mr gurumurthy is an acclaimed writer who has penned thought provoking articles in several dailies and periodicals across the country he is well known for his radical views on raging issues many of his articles in the new indian express highlighted the disadvantages of globalization espousing the cause of the swadeshi movement and a united india along with his team of professionals and academics mr gurumurthy has studied over 25 community driven industrial clusters in different parts of the country a chartered accountant by training his outstanding knowledge of economics and accounting unconventional economic thinking and his powerful personality have had an immense influence over corporate india after completing his ca in 1972 he joined an auditing firm and was allotted the job of maintaining the books of some of the companies owned by press baron ramnath goenka in 1976 mr gurumurthy started his own firm guru and vardhan mr gurumurthy has to his credit solved many corporate family issues and also brought about an amicable solution to one of the biggest corporate issues between grassing and lnt he was rated among the 50 most powerful persons in india in 1990 by the gentleman magazine as the eighth most powerful person by the business parent magazine in 2004 and as the 17th most powerful person by india today magazine in 2005 it is noteworthy that his influence rests on the status he enjoys as a person and as a writer of integrity and courage rather than power from any formal position he occupied in the government or any organization without taking any more time i request mr gurumurthy to grace the stage and enlighten us with his thoughts mr ali gardridge who delivered a brilliant organized well prepared and well structured speech before all of you but i will be doing something very different i had very little time to organize my thoughts in fact only at 11 o'clock last night i got to know from mr sudam so what i am supposed to talk on so you can, so you can understand that will be a contrast but i would like to limit the gap as much as possible between what he said and what i am going to speak and mr devankar professor karuna uh, professor sona and mr pandali and their students brothers and sisters see as he said there is a lot of advantage in speaking next and there is also disadvantage and there is an advantage in coming with a prepared mind with a clear thought to express what you have to speak on and there is also an advantage to come with a chaotic mind and trying to understand what the audience is and what is the ambience what is the expectation because this can never be forethought and forecast so in that sense i am at an advantage as well as at a disadvantage it is a contextual and contemporary exposition of a very high order and with personal experience that mr gardra just brought to bear on his speech and one more he spoke about values you know it is very easy to speak on values but it is not precept and practice in this country in this country it is swadhyaya pravachana you have to practice and then only talk of all the industrial groups with which i have fairly familiar personal knowledge or distant academic knowledge i feel the godridge group and mr adi godridge they are capable of speaking on values because they have practiced certain values of a high order i would have said this even in his absence <laughs> mr 
Mr. Devan Kattar introduced to me as one of the distinguished persons, along with Mr. Adi Gadraj, as a person distinguished in his own field. I myself do not know what is my field. In the Chartered Accountants gathering, they think I am a journalist. And so they disown me. The journalists think I am a Chartered Accountant. They disown me. So I suffer from an identity crisis as to which is my field. Actually, one of the biggest advantages I got in my life at a very early age was to think that the society is an open air university. You have got to learn from the society. And so I am a generalist. I am no specialist in any field. And the society is providing you such a tremendous amount of experience. If you have the knack, if you have the mind, if you have the learning tendencies, and if you have the humility, the society teaches you. And I have been a student of the society for the last 40 years. And if I am going to talk to you, it is not with the background of any research or textbook or academic credentials, but only as someone who has experienced the society very intimately, compassionately, and as someone who has established and who feels a close touch with the society, and I am not one of those condescending to say, we have to give back to the society what we got. We are only sharing with the society what we have already got from them. So it is the idea of sharing, including in knowledge or material prosperity or whatever we have got in terms of name or fame, it's all part of the society's contribution to us. I always used to think as someone who has thought about the fundamentals of economics, that if one of you is given a million acres of land in the moon, will you go and occupy it? You will be alone. Nothing is worth enjoying alone. Even the market value of properties go only when the population in that locality goes up. You reduce the people, land has no value. Reduce the people, a mall has no value. Reduce the people, IIT has no value. So you must understand, people are the assets. And the quality of the people has to increase. For which, what is my contribution? So this is the uh, intimate training and the relation-based uh, ethics with which I moved with the society. And it is in this context I will be talking some of my largely incoherent experiences, which I will try to present it as coherently as possible. And before I go further, I must acknowledge I am talking before an audience, which is going to be the interpreter of India to the world, which is going to deal with the world which is going to be the brand builder of India for the world. We have to deal with the world. We need not become the world. We need not copy the world. But we have to deal with the world. And the training that IITs, IIMs and high educational institutions provide, they must enable you to handle the world for the country. You handle the world for yourself. You handle the world for the family. You handle the world for the for your life. But you must also scale up your thinking that you have to handle the world for your country also. And I will go into the deeper meaning of what I am saying, not in terms of the emotional idea of India or the intellectual or historical idea of India. I will also tell you what is the economic idea of India, the commercial idea of India, or the, an idea of India that is capable of leading the world with a certain thought which the world has been lacking in the last 200-300 years. I am not a great believer in speeches. In fact, when Obama became the President of America, I wrote an article in the New Indian Express which got me hit mails in hundreds because the idea of this uh, avenue is change as one of the important dimensions. And Obama spoke of change. And he says change is coming, coming, coming. And when, cha when he got elected, he says change has come. <laughs> so I wrote, 
that in Srimad Bhagavatam there is a verse about what Kali Yuga would be. It must have been written at least 1700-1800 years ago according to the dating of our history in which the, there is a small sentence very pithy which says that in Kali Yuga orators will be mistaken for scholars. So I am not a great believer in oration. Not because I am a scholar. To be recognized as a scholar, I don't believe in oration. But the fact is, speech has become one of the most dishonest means of communicating things which you don't practice. So it is a, you have to qualify to talk. And today, the qualification to talk is on such externals. There is no internal evolution required for a person to share his thoughts at all. Status-based talks, name-based talks, talks, position-based talks, and we also glorify these thoughts and talks. So, I always believe that sometimes writing is better than talking because at least you contemplate a lot before you edit it and then put it in proper words, rewrite it, and then make yourself understandable. Talk is very, very superficial, and so this is not one of my indulgences. Now let us come to the topic, change, evolve, and, and sustain. Sorry. See, there is a meaning attached to each one of these words, if you can go into it deeper. Is the change what you call it is, related, it is related to time. And there is an Indian meaning of change. And there is a Western meaning of change. It is philosophical.